Costa. Welcome to be talking about Welcome to Soapbox. I'm the newest co-host of the show and I'm excited to be here tonight live. We have uh, some people to uh, honor right now as far as our underwriters who help us keep the show going. Um, that would be Pieces Pizza which also feeds us here and helps us get the crew um, going and keep them going through the show and keep them happy. Uh, they're located at Capitol uh, and N at 21st Street. And also want to thank a sh do a shout out to James Israel for his support. Uh, he has a paper called Humor Times. Um, it's on, on um, humortimes.com and I appreciate you guys checking that out. He's got some great artwork, some wonderful humor. Uh, do us all a favor, check it out. You might enjoy it. Um, tonight, I have some pretty interesting, lovely people that I've known for a while here that are into really wonderful causes. And we're here to talk about the Crunch Nestle Alliance. I have Andy Kahn. And I have Bob Saunders, who are members, and we've been at this for a while, but these guys have been doing it for a long time. They put their heart and soul in it, so we're here to talk about it tonight and get the word out and let people know what this is all about Fantastic. and hopefully gain some support in the process. Wonderful. So welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks it's for having us. great. So um, I was just wondering about the backstory of all this and how you guys got involved in this. Well, you know, about 25 years ago, the water bottling companies made a concerted effort to start saying tap water bad, bottle water good. And people bought into it. You know, they had the Janet Jackson uh, uh, music videos with her drinking the Avion and um, more and more fluff about how great bottled water was and how horrible tap water was. And from the beginning, I for one knew it was pretty much of a scam. You know, basically you're, you're, you're buying your own water. And uh, as the drought got, got uh, worse and worse, both Bob and I got a little more pissed at what was going on. And so we started uh, the Crunch Nestle's Alliance but uh, September of last year? Yes. Yeah, September of last year when we did the first attempted shutdown of Nestle's on uh, Younger Creek Road. And we were successful. The pumps were not turned on. And uh, it was a great, joyful, really fun action. And uh, what was really amusing, one of the amusing parts about that was that the police that kind of monitor us, one of them called me and ask the usual questions, who's in charge, nobody's in charge, how many people will be there, 4,000, <laughs> maybe 50,000, we're not sure. And then I asked him what he thought about the drought, and he went off, he, he, was, he was really pissed off. You know, my wife's roses are dying, the neighborhood looks like crap. So well, the first time we got there, there were a huge, huge police presence, huge. And they were all as mellow as could be, they were all just really mellow. And, and we kind of saw that they bought into the experience that, unlike a lot of protests, they were really on the right side. Yeah. And so in further shutdowns, we've run into the same thing. We haven't heard from them on, on this attempted shutdown. Uh, we plan on doing two, uh, sh two, uh, two actions uh, at the same time, shutting down Alhambra and Nestle on the same day in the same area. And they're right across the street from each other. They're right across the correct. street from each other. We mm -hmm. want to turn all their pumps off for the day. And um, so we've done, uh, this will be the third attempted shutdown. We just, Bob spearheaded uh, working with Shasta to do a huge or, huge gathering. We had about 500 people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, Chief Sisk of the Winman Win 2 was a keynote speaker. And we made a march up to uh, to the Crystal Geyser plant, which is the second Crystal Geyser plant up there. And they have unfettered access to the waters at the beginning of the headwaters. So they're getting us at both ends. They're getting us up at, at, at Shasta, where they're draining from our headwaters, and then they're getting down to our aquifers down here 
in Sacramento. It's, and it, and it, also it, in San Bernardino, correct? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and with San Bernardino, you know, there, there wasn't a permit for 27 years. Right. And Nestle's was playing, paying less than $100 for up to 100 million gallons. That's just incredible. Now, am I correct in saying that there's a court action against them now with the, the, uh, the thing that's going on in San Bernardino? There is, yeah, yeah. there is a court mm -hmm. uh, the Courage Campaign mm -hmm. and a couple of other large organizations are spearheading that, and uh, it should be a no-brainer. I mean, the Park Service deserves a spanking on this one. Yeah. And then so we did mm -hmm. an, uh, another rally at Governor Brown's mansion, and uh, then this event up there, and I'll let Bob talk a little bit about the Northwest Alliance, because he's spearheading that. and, and uh, why don't you talk a little? You want to start yeah, with talking? Yeah, we had discussed a little sure. bit of it sure. last yeah, night, but I'm right. very, very interested in hearing yeah. about that. I'll talk that. about that in just a second. What I want to start okay. off with, the two biggest climate threats facing, you know, Northern California and actually, you know, somewhat the rest of California uh, is persistent drought that we're going into our fifth year of drought and, uh, and uh, massive fires. And we've already had the fires this year. Um, one of the problems that we face, too, is I would add to that is uh, massive water bottling by 100, the 110 plants in our state of all different companies. Um, Pepsi is one of the large players, along with Crystal Geyser and Nestle, Coca-Cola, uh, Coca and Niagara Bottling Company, who originally I thought was from Niagara Falls, New York, but it's <laughs> California, of course, and of down course, south. Crystal Geyser, right, Crystal yeah. Geyser right. is out mm -hmm. of Japan. It's owned right. by a company out of right. Japan. Right, Atsuka Pharmaceutical Company, yeah the makers of the Billify. And, you know, and, and so essentially what we have, and of course you add fracking to the mix, and if you talk to those industries, both would say, we only take a small portion, the water, Nestle says we only take 1.5, you know, uh, percent of all the water used and stuff. <laughs> I'd like to know where they get their numbers from. We'd like to know that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I said, so I always like to add is 1.5 uh, percent per minute. <laughs> or per second, something that's probably right. more like it. Yeah, we, we're, you know, with Nestle's locally, we're going to be filing, um, if we need to, we're going to file a FOIA and everything. And then actually, we're working with a couple of other groups to do that, because since they're on federal property, they're on um, the cities, the counties, the states, and the feds have all colluded, basically. What they're doing is they've all allowed them to feed into the idea of privatizing water, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's Orwellian it's when you think about that. And so the thing about Nestle's is that, um, you know, they're one of the most egregious players. They have a really bad track record. As I said to her at a meeting I was just at, um, I mentioned that to me they're one of the twin pillars of evil along with Monsanto. I mean, they wreak havoc all across the world. You know, if you went to their websites, you would think that they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and the humanitarian and, yeah. you know, and, and all that. And I all did look awards. at that and I was yeah. like, I, this does not sound like the same company to me. No. no. <laughs> and I looked at Crystal Geysers, too, before yeah. we did the event up in, in Mount Shasta, and it was the same thing, too. I mean, their publicity department is churning out this stuff, and they look like... You know, you would you would want them you, have your kid go to work for them and stuff, and, and you know, but it's crazy. You know, one, one of the one mm -hmm. of the funny mm -hmm. things is is that they came out with this mm -hmm. fact that they're only filling up to two swimming pools a, a year what? With, with water, <laughs> yeah. and and, and I thought well, it would have to be the old flyjacker <laughs> pool in San Francisco that you had to load a boat across. Right, yeah, you know, they, it <laughs> some of their ploys, but their major ploy, Nestle's, has always been. Hey, we pay the same amount of money as, as all the water as, as, as everybody yeah. in Sacramento, but mm -hmm. there's but we a little don't difference. All make a profit yeah, off of it. they're water profiteers. That's exactly <laughs> it. I'm yeah. sorry, Bob. Go ahead. You know, one, of, one of the major problems with that, and I'll, I'll um, you know dovetail on what Andy just brought up here, was it was a, the deal for Nestle's to come here locally was really a dirty backroom deal. It's classic. I mean, these guys probably had their sleeves rolled up and wore the things and were smoking cigars, and it was just I mean, straight out of something like The Sting or you know or or something about how many Hall. L A Confidential. Yeah, L A Confidential. <laughs> exactly. I mean, uh, we were told that there was no. It, it's not a contract. Um, they were basically given the same thing. They're paying the same thing as all the uh, residential water users do in the city of Sacramento. They're paying 67 cents. Uh, the deal they got was 67 cents per 750 gallons of water, which is basically a stainless steel water truck that you see go by um, there. The only difference is, as Andy always says, is that um, 
uh, other companies that we don't we don't have a problem with if they have access to water because they'll clean their machinery and do things like that you know for maintenance and all that cool down their machines. Nestle's uses it to bottle the water and then sell it to people. Or is the case of two Walmart companies under Walmart's two separate brands is they get their water from municipal water supply in Modesto and then they and it's uh, right filter there on and water the label. If anybody Absolutely. cares to look, please right. look the next time you even think of buying right. water. Right. So it's the folks right down there. in Modesto are ba basically paying twice for, for their water and they're given the privilege that they can also buy, uh, buy the water that their taxes are actually paying you know, for it to be pumped. I mean, it's insane. And this is essentially what happens. And, and the more we dig, mm -hmm. the more egregious it becomes and, and just the more it kind of hardens our resolve about that we have to stand up and fight about this. And at the meeting I was just at, somebody was showing a movie and it was a, you know, it was a hip hop, um, singer and he was talking about and then you know sang and rhymed about how we need to um, do something about the environment how we have to protect it how we have to you know practice more acts of random kindness towards each other and the planet and things of that sort and then that i got a, a flash and a thought and so when i spoke i said my buddies and i fellow activists what we do and almost everything we do is we practice random acts of kindness but i said but i think what and we also do something else that I think more people in this room and everywhere on the planet need to do is we need to practice more random acts of civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because they're coming for everything that we hold uh, um, important and vital, which is the sustenance of life, our food, you know, with GMOs. Water and air. Um, our water and our air, you know, geoengineering with the air. And they're trying to privatize everything. And I know, essentially, I remember a couple of years ago when Bush and Cheney were running, I said, uh-oh, should, somebody should come up with a... Um, a uh, cartoon about um, with the sign on the, the United States of America that says for sale and you know all resources for sale and essentially because that's really what was going on with the rest of the world we didn't think it was it was happening here but they were planning for it you know the it TPP was right no underneath accident. their nose Absolutely. the whole time and, I, th I yeah. think one of the, mm -hmm. the primary points that we'd love to get across mm -hmm. to your viewers and we'd love to get across to everyone else is that you're buying tap water yeah you are buying tap water. It looks really pretty in the gas station, the pull-out uh, freezer, you know, nice and cold, but it's tap water. Yeah. One of the, the most hysterical things that came out in the last year was that Fiji Water, who has been making their campaign to rag on Cleveland uh, and Cleveland's tap water, right. Cleveland decided to get scientists, separate scientists, to do the test. And Cleveland's water was healthier than Fiji water. This water that is, you know, mm -hmm. purported to be coming from a Pol Polynesian Christine. island. Yeah, it's, and, all yeah. it, it's all about packaging. It's all about packaging, guys. When it gets right down to it, you're buying tap water. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems about that is people don't realize with bottled water, um, the a government agency that governs that or state agency that governs that essentially is the, um, well, no, it's government agency, is the... Um, uh, the USDA because it's considered like food grade water. So their only requirement in the FDA is the one and the e excuse me, EPA is the one that governs your tap water to make sure there aren't impurities, you know, and things like that. And if there is, things need to be done. They can shut your water down if they had to for safety's sake, if it was extremely toxic. What's going on is with the um, USDA, mm -hmm. all they require is uh, all they require is the fact that your water is clear like this. It could be brown, murky stuff that you wouldn't want to step in, let alone drink. But if it looks clear, that's fine. All bottled water has some form, some measure of arsenic in it. And it could have other things, too. But if it looks clear, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's good to go. And one of the things, too, is, you know, why we do some of this stuff also is, I'm going to read you a quote. It says, absolutely not. In fact, if I could increase it, I would. That was the answer Nestle Waters North America CEO Tim Brown gave last May when Jay Famiglietti, a hydrologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, who they were the ones who took the, um, the thermograph um, of the state of California mm, as, yeah. that were running out of water. Maybe we have a year left or and a year and a half. with the ground sinking. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, exactly. He asked him whether he would ever consider moving his company's water bottling operations out of California. During, and he asked him during an interview on, on an air talk show with uh, someone by the name of Larry Mantle. That was on May 13, 2015. And that came after the CEO, P Peter Brayberg Lamath of uh, Nestle Swiss, had said, water uh, is not a right, it's a commodity, basically, to be bought and sold. A I mean, food stuff, if you will. Right, exactly. And this is the attitude. So people, the pro one of the problems we have, too, is that people are actually 
the people, the ones incentivizing all these corporations are doing right. that. They're putting money into these companies, screwing us. And I have here divestment of pension plans and university endowments. And right on here, CalPERS has a Nestle's investment in 2014. It was reported of 808,000, excuse me, $808 million. Oh my goodness. Coca Cola and Pepsi, 550 million. Atsuka, that owns Crystal Geyser now, 53 million. Danone Waters, which is made by Danon, that actually used to own the plant that was taken over by Crystal Geyser in Mount Shasta, although it's not operational. $110 million, $800,000. Um, and uh, in Monsanto, $211,762,000. Actually, the largest investment by CalPERS is in oil and gas exploration. So essentially, and, and um, one of the things that came out of what we did in, in July when we went ahead and we protested at the governor's loft is several of us wrote um, something called Save Our Water. It was an executive order. Um, we wrote by the governor of the state of California. It's written by the Crunch Nestle Alliance where we basically are calling for a full moratorium on fracking and water bottling until the end of the uh, um, uh, drought and or forever. Uh, <laughs> did we get a response? We um, I got a card in the mail today that it, it, <laughs> and it said Brown, so it, in other words, Brown's <laughs> office. So we went ahead and it took us until the 17th of November to, to figure out a way to get it to him because I, when, um, another one of our members went ahead and we went there in early July to... Um, uh, was it early August to give it to his office? We were told unless we had an appointment, we couldn't see anybody. The CHP officer said, "Why don't we just drop it off in his box?" You know, that's where they like people to do it. And I said, "I'm sure you do. That's the way they'll be with everything else and they'll ignore it." And I said, "Well, we," I said, "I don't mean to be presumptuous here, but I think this is really important for. We think this is important for the governor to see because we have um, a plan that can help." lessen the, the drought that we have here. And we always feel it's a citizen's duty to alert our public officials, who, as of course you heard You're this, correct. they're public servants, they work for us. And I, you go, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, um, to at least take a look at it. I said, you know, we're not crackpots. We're people who take this issue seriously. We can cite chapter and verse. We have many experts that are involved in it that are scientists, hydrologists, and things like that. that and we've spoken to everybody about it. So at least give us 15 minutes would be fine. So one of their office people came out, started to get on the elevator, and Lisa, one of our members, followed her in there and <laughs> takes this out and tells her she had a copy and says, and I said the woman must have been mortified and like <laughs> probably didn't move and saying, please get me to the fourth floor. <laughs> so she did, and I said, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't make it across the hallway fast enough. <laughs> so she was funny, and so we, so anyway, so I called the governor's office, and they said, well, go to the website, book, a, you know, but if you want to, you could put it in the box and stuff like that. I said, no, we don't want to do that. So then I figured a friend of mine told me, send it certified mail return re yeah. receipt requested then we have a track record and i said great because then if we don't get a response from the governor i know it's the holidays but i'll give them at least a week then we'll publicize the fact that the governor is ignoring this and we had had this on a huge poster board outside his loft and actually we had a copy just like this all he had to do is sign it and date it if he chose to do so after reading it mm -hmm. or take it with him our meat, cannon, our meat cannon, unfortunately, got stuck in Modesto. Uh, one, yeah. of our members, <laughs> one of our members <laughs> had, had designed a meat cannon that shot McDonald's hamburgers, and we were trying to get yeah. them in the window. But, and, and I also yes. remember that day, it was 102 degrees outside. But, but we nobody still had, any, had We were still right. out there. We were right. still trying to get our point across. Right, right. Um, yep. It wasn't just about Nestle. It was about fracking. Right, It Everything. was about mm -hmm. anything that has to do with water just to get... Governor Brown to get a clue that we're not sleeping and right. that mm -hmm. we're paying attention and we mm -hmm. know exactly what he's doing and what he's ignoring to and, do. Or not doing, yeah. Um, and that day there wasn't one single water, uh, plastic reuse, uh, uh, single use water bottle. We haven't used single use yeah. water no, bottles. No, but I'm saying that was year. great because we didn't, you know, we had some new people well, that were there, not one person yeah, did it. Guys. You know, yeah, guys. Yeah, right on. <laughs> you know, so well, anyway, with the governor, yeah. that was interesting. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that we believe that Governor Cuomo in New York state demonstrated the, the right act of leadership by banning fracking. And they didn't have right. to do it. They have places in upstate New York like that, and they've been doing it for years, like California. And then Governor Brown, uh, who I wish was our Governor Brown, in Oregon, in Oregon yes. uh, is, going, is looking at banning, because they're, they're floating initiative up there that was pushed by a uh, water alliance group up there who we're going to be working with. Um, 
because they want to tap in. Nestle's has been after the Columbia River Gorge for 20 years. Right. And all of a sudden, in the stealth of night, they try to cut a deal, and some groups up there caught on to it, and then they just screamed. And, um, and it was really good about it, because that's exactly what Nestle does. I mean, they would have dealt with the city or the county. You know? Could I take a second yeah, for please. a commercial? Yeah. Uh, one of the things I want to mention, well, here's our poster. Better on here? Here's our poster for the next uh, attempted shutdown. It is Friday, December 4th. It starts at 4 a.m. Only us hardcore get there at 4 a.m. <laughs> but we put up fences, placards, bicycle blockades, everything we can. And, and this one's interesting because there are eight, eight openings, uh -huh. eight doors uh -huh. that we have to work with and truck gates. Uh -huh. But the Nestle Alliance, more importantly, came out of Occupy right. Sacramento. Right. And, and everyone thinks Occupy is dead, but it's dead, but no one told Sacramento. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't know it was dead. So we have shut down Monsanto. We've yeah. attempted seven times. We've okay. shut them down five times. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing with Monsanto is that maybe we cost them a couple of million dollars for the shutdowns, for them not being able to work for the day. But more importantly, all the activists throughout the United States caused their stock to drop 25%. Now that's billions of dollars. And continuing. Actually, 33% for the second quarter in a row. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Great news. Yeah. But the, mm -hmm. that's an example mm -hmm. of why mm -hmm. we do these things mm -hmm. is, is to draw attention. We're street activists, basically. We save the going inside for other people. But through Occupy, we formed the, the, the Nestle's Alliance. Uh, we have the Stop Monsanto Project. Mm -hmm. We have a theater company. We still do our GAs every other Saturday over at uh, um, Fremont, Fremont Park. Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's great to say when, when people say, oh, yeah, I remember Occupy from a couple of years ago. Well, we remember Occupy from yesterday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're, we're not giving up. We think, we, we think it was a very noble cause. And, uh, it lives. Mm -hmm. It yep. still lives. Yes. It lives in Sacramento. Yes, it where, does. We're like that one Japanese soldier that's hiding <laughs> in the hills of the Philippines and no one's told him World War II is yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. And the foreclosure group is still going on, helping group. people and doing different things. Yeah. We've shut down, yeah. what, between six and seven banks? Something like that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And some very fun. We shut down a West Par a Wells Fargo doing a whole giant Monopoly game mm -hmm. with big Monopoly cards and big dice and... People all dressed up as the, as the characters, and it was uh, it was fun and it was uh -huh. effective. Right, uh -huh. you know, and it does get it gets attention. Uh -huh. Local media comes; right. they always yeah. come to these events. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, sometimes they they're helpful. Sometimes uh -huh. they aren't helpful, uh -huh. but you know, sometimes it's just at least getting getting the word out, no matter what. It's uh -huh. like you know, as long as they say your name, mm -hmm. sure. you know, it's a good thing. After the second shutdown, we we got international press. The right. first shutdown was just yeah. national press, but then we started having documentary companies from Belgium, yeah, and Germany, from Germany, right, France, and, and then yeah. there will be one following mm -hmm. us around on on this shutdown. Uh -huh. So it will be a lot of fun for people to come on down and. Be a part of history yeah. because we believe we believe that we will win. You know uh -huh. that, that that people are going to understand that water water tap water should not be for sale, not at two thousand to ten thousand percent profit, and then not in a drought. Yeah. yeah, and it's killing our state. Yeah. And mm -hmm. not to be sent to other parts of the country. People I know um, saw Nef Nestle Pure Life, and uh, which is bottled in Sacramento. Saw it in uh, the state of Washington. Saw it in Michigan. Saw Crystal Geyser in Michigan. It's all coming. It's bottled at the source right up right here. That one in Michigan was from. Uh, she saw it. It, uh, it was from the weed plant. Mm -hmm. You know, just a, a mere eight miles away from Mount Shasta, pumping 1.5 million gallons a day. You know, Nestle locally. It's funny, somebody from the Swiss version, a reporter from the Swiss version of um, the um, uh, Wall Street Journal had called me last year after um, our second shutdown. And so he asked me a whole bunch of questions and interviewed me on the phone and stuff. It was a lot of fun. I said, I have just one question for you. And he said, sure, go ahead. I asked you lots of questions. And I said, how do you folks in, in um, Switzerland feel about Nestle's? That's where the parent headquarters is. He said, we hate yeah. them. He said, we see what they do all around the world. He said, and we report it sometimes. I said, well, how do you get away with it? Because Wall Street Journal is usually, you know, almost like the, uh, the publicity department for, you know, major corporate business and international business. And he said, but when they do something so egregious, he said, um, 
you know, we have to tell the truth. I said, oh, yeah, I used to read the Wall Street Journal when I was back in New York, and I remember you had some really great articles and exposés. I said, you mean so it falls into that category? And he said, yeah. And he said, yeah, nobody loves, loves them in, in this place. He said, I, I think, though, that they love themselves. And um, he said, it sure sounds like it. And it's amazing yeah. how huge uh -huh. they are. You can't go into a grocery store and try and pick something off uh -huh. the shelf without having their stamp on it. Uh -huh. I, it it's really opened my eyes up right. a lot. Um, the one that brought this whole thing to my attention in the first place was Fago. Right. And I had picked up uh -huh. some water for some groups that were camping out over at the Capitol, and uh -huh. it happened to be um, Nestle Pure Life. <laughs> and I got, you stepped in that he, one. <laughs> he, 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 you know, pretty much rode me up one side and down the other for it, and I'm like, yeah. geez, I had no idea. Uh -huh. But, you know, that's how you learn. Uh -huh. and, and if you do, you start doing your own research, you actually find out just uh -huh. how, how deep this goes how much money they're making is just, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. Right. And they're just one of those other huge evil corporations that they, they destroy lives, mm -hmm. you know, in one way or another, either from the food sure. that they give to babies, mm -hmm. to the, the crap that they put on our, our shelves in the stores, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now they're taking our water. Mm -hmm. um, it just, the list goes on. I saw someone this, this afternoon, I know, I know the woman who did this, said that she's in Spain with her husband and um, she's an activist and been involved in GMO labeling and, and some other stuff. She said, uh, unbelievable, I'm in Spain. She put this out on our Crunch Nestle Alliance um, Facebook page. And she said, I can't believe it. Everything is Nestle here. She said, the water's Nestle Pure Life. She said, there are stands, and on the umbrella stands on, uh, is a Nestle logo. Every, there are ice cream, you know, like ice cream carts. It's Nestle's. When you go into a store, it's like, you know, you can help yourself. It's Nestle. She goes, it's all over the place. She said, I can't get away from it. She said, it's worse here than it is, you know, even in Sacramento. Yeah, because it's a European company. Right, exactly. Yeah. And the other part is on, on the tri, you know, folder that I have over there. That's why I made it international, and I had made that for the first event we had because it shows a little bit about all, all the things going on. I mean, and also where how Nestle drains water in African um, countries and cities where they have nothing. I mean, they take the last bit that they have in Pennsylvania, uh, taking it from, you know, since it goes from um, uh, Europe and, and uh, Africa, you know, all the continents basically, all the way to the United States, North America, um, essentially what ne Nestle's once had a, uh, they drained an aquifer in Pennsylvania and left, left to go somewhere else to go do it and it dropped the water table four feet. And that's you know, horrible. if anybody knows what that means, they might say, well, four feet, how much, that's, well, four feet's not a lot. Well, what happens with an aquifer when you drain it, it then starts sinking. California is sinking. It's, I thought about it on the way over to another meeting I was at before. It's like a dried up prune. It's, it dries up and shrinks and keeps shrinking until it basically sucks up itself. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what's happening with the ground and going and people having to dr drill wells 2,000 feet. I mean, when it used to be 200 feet, they would get water and they keep having to go deeper. And then they, they take their neighbor's water. And then the town of Tulare County has no water. Exactly. They haven't used Shipping bottled water. It in now. And right. San, San Diego yeah. is in a real serious, yep. serious problems. People mm -hmm. are bringing and shipping in the water. They're paying an exorbitant amount for water to be shipped in right. because they, they got all their water ripped off. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, this can happen to, 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 to anyone. These few rainstorms that we have are not going to do anything yeah. for, for to, to, to cure the drought. It's going to take f a good five years to get things back to some semblance mm -hmm. of normalcy. Yep. Um, and um, I, saw, I saw a thing on um, HBO, a show called Vice, and they brought up this whole thing in, I, I believe it was a Middle Eastern country, right. where, I mean, they just go over to war just because of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're um, gonna be there. Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. It could happen here too. Absolutely. You know, it, it's sure. and it's frightening, and it, it's um, it's just you people don't have a clue what effect that can have on a country, and and its people, mm -hmm. and then they have refugees because they have to leave because there's they have no water. They can't mm -hmm. farm. They right. can't. You can't live without water. We need water. 
if it gets worse, there'll be a migration out of California. Oh, sure. And where do you go? Then right. you go to the Badlands, and you go to the the the, 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 the prairies and the, the the desert of Nevada, and uh, you know, uh -huh. that's a sad situation. My other concern is, you know, they're still frigging away, and mm -hmm. with the the ground collapsing, right. and we have all these. These earthquake faults. Right. Mm -hmm. There's just an it earthquake in Oklahoma. Of, yeah, yeah. That where they were fracking. It's heavily. only a matter of time mm -hmm. that we're gonna. It, it could set off the uh, the big one. I sure. don't know. Of course. We 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 don't mean to be alarmist. Right. We really don't. But but some of us see the handwriting on the wall, and if things don't approve with our water here, and we don't take proactive actions, and people don't begin to learn what their watershed is all about and how they get their water through their tap, uh, then, then we're going to just sink. That, that's, that, literally, literally yeah. Yes. Yeah. sink. Yeah, there has to, uh, the people need to get active in this issue. This is, a, this is an issue that we do not want to turn into water wars. And it, it could so right, easily sure. turn into water wars. So what do you guys, what would you guys use as references for people to start, that want to start looking into this and, and get involved? I mean, we have the Crunch Nestle Alliance mm -hmm. web, it's Facebook, yeah, correct? Yeah, that's but a good site. Mm -hmm. you, 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 uh, hashtag Crunch right. Nestle Alliance, there's an awful lot of information there. Um, if you just go on and, and you put <laughs> Nestle Water Profiteer, or Crystal Geyser, Water Profiteer, in your, in, in your, uh, um, Google. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it'll, search, it'll search put up, yeah, like search, that. search yeah, engines. Yeah, Thank right. you. That's what I was looking mm -hmm. for. Um, mm -hmm. it will pull so much information, terrifying information about, about how things really are right now and how they could mm -hmm. get worse. Um, and, um, I would, Bob had mentioned the fact that you guys would like to start a coalition. Right. With right. Oregon and Washington State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I'll take that. That's yeah. what he had mentioned early on. It's perfect time for um, for mentioning that. So, you know, essentially, after we did some of these actions, I just got the thought and said, you know, how do we make this work? Uh, Congress and the legislature of every state, they're not doing anything about it. It's as if the problem doesn't exist. And Governor Brown comes out and, and he proclaims how, we, you know, we need to cut back on it. I mean, we who use 7 to 10 percent of all the water. And I'm going, well, if farming uses about 80 percent. And then there's fracking and all these other, you know, and, and then also the um, corporate factory farms and everything. What about them? Yeah. You know, and then you all of a sudden I watch his plan unravel because of the 1914 senior, junior, and riparian water rights, and then uh, the the uh, agreements from the 1800s where basically you got land and water, water came with it. Nobody ever thought about it. That's why Mark Twain said, whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. <laughs> and when Mark Reisner wrote his book, um, De uh, Desert Cadillac, he addressed a lot of these issues, and he really had a good eye towards the future. I'm rereading that book now very, very slowly. I'm actually, I'm studying it. It's like almost become like a math book to me where you have to read it really slowly. Um, and it's just amazing when you really, and then I go back and I look and then I come forward and everything. And, and I'm trying to draw the connections and connect the dots to where we are today. And I'm saying this guy, he basically was a prognosticator. He knew exactly what was going on and he spoke to the right people. And they're probably scratching their heads and said, we told you guys. What was the book, 25 years old? Um, yeah. About that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, the key thing about it is in, because of, you know, we're on a slippery slope, and one of the problems is all the incestuous relationships between government officials. If you looked at the portfolio of a lot of um, Congress people and legislators, they have a lot of money invested in uh, oil and gas. They, they've got the same money in, invested in the Nestle's and the Atsukas and the everything like that, and they won't pass. It would actually be, for them, it's a very bizarre way of saying if they did anything legislatively to deal with these things, then essentially it would be a conflict of interest. I think it would actually be a conflict of interest that would be going in the right direction. But that's always a problem. They don't want to bite the hand that feeds them mm -hmm. or the lobbyists that help them get elected and reelected. But that's really what we're up against. It's really the dark side of, of politics and economics in this country. And, and it's really disgusting. It would be fine 
if it didn't affect us on a level that's affecting us. But like we said earlier about they're coming and trying to privatize everything. Yes. And with the TPP, they're just trying to codify it yes, forever. Yes, exactly. That you can't even sue. I mean, if Nestle's poisoned an aquifer or something, or they dried up an aquifer in Sacramento, or two of them, like, say, you know, down and around, you know, uh, the south area, what are the people in the area going to do? Right. No, it's, it's, it's kind of worse than that. Mm -hmm. If you stopped them, if you successfully right. stopped them then right. you're, you're from doing it, then they will from getting profit. Then they us. will go to right. the tribunal and right. say they right. With the TPP. lost profit. Right, right. right. Yeah. exactly. I, I, yep. That's why I was so excited to hear your, your, your mm -hmm. show just, uh, just a while ago mm -hmm. uh, with Miss Price, because uh, the, the TPP goes along with things like water, Monsanto, um, this this will cause major problems for the working people of the world. Well, they're the ones that yeah. are making the decisions on the TPP. Right. You know them and their lobbyists. Right. And and, and the uh, and the, the tribunal what the people, attorneys. Yeah. What people are mm -hmm. there? Right. Have we any of us ever had a vote on any of this? No. No. Nope. We don't even know what it looks like. This is yep. like the most egregious, undemocratic mm -hmm. thing I've ever. Mm -hmm. experienced in my entire life sure. and I can't believe it's happening mm -hmm. and well, I can't well, believe, trying to make I can't believe yeah, yeah. how few people yeah. actually know what's going on with yeah. the TPP that's what really mm -hmm. really amazes me because you know I'm I'm a walking soapbox and I talk <laughs> to people about mm -hmm. TPP and, and they've never even heard of it you know, and these are, you know, bright working people that, you know, should be paying attention. Well, that's just the way uh, our people at the top want it. Yep. Uh -huh. The perfect combination of comfort and fear. Yep. Keeping people glued to the TV set or heading to Disneyland. Yep. And distracted. Yep. Yeah, very, di yeah. <laughs> Weapons of mass distraction, that's what they're addicted to. And, they, you know, it's hard to get their heads away from all that stuff. And, you know, in the whole TPP thing, there's no doubt... It's being driven by corporations like Nestle and Monsanto, you know, the, the big players. And the smaller players will, you know, just ride their coattails to it. But the thing is, I mean, it clearly is constitutional violations because it violates your right to due process and the right of uh, the First Amendment that includes um, the right to redress grievances. Because who in this room, in this building, can afford to go to Europe to go before the tribunal, which is a kangaroo court, and plead your case? Right. And then if you lose, you're gonna, it's going to cost you court costs. And then the other part is, and then they'll probably sue you if you win for you know, restraint of trade or affecting their business or anything. And we see every time we're trying to make headway and, and alert the populace mm -hmm. about what's really going on, you then get somebody like a Monsanto that goes to get a, a bill passed. Or you get a, you know, Nestle's is out, you know, doesn't have to do that because they're putting all their stock into um, pushing through the TPP and they're not even worrying about anything else because if the TPP passes, it'll kill everything in the city, county, states, and all that. And so our vote will actually truly mean absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll just be if you want to exercise your arm in the old days, you could have pulled the machine. Now, you know, if you want to, you know, kind of get writer's cramp, you can fill that out. But it's, it's useless. But, you know, we're going to mm -hmm. continue that fight. Mm -hmm. But as far yeah. as with um, our partners mm -hmm. in Oregon and Washington, mm -hmm. Um, have we got any um, communication with them about yes. building oh, yeah. a coalition yeah. and how serious is it? And They're very excited where, about where, where it. Where are we at yeah. in the process? Everybody that I first approached about it, now it's not mine anymore, it belongs to all of us. And, and basically... We, we never thought it belonged to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they humored me. They always like to do this. Because I said, hey, I got this great idea. You know? And everybody, I, I told two people, and, I, and, I, and just to, like, trial balloon, he was the first one, and then another good friend of ours, uh, Mauro, was the second one. Mauro immediately, bless him, went and started, built, built a, um, a Crystal Geyser direct action strike team. So in less than, like... First, I thought 24 hours. He did it in like, I think, probably started working on it minutes after we got off the phone. Well, so, amazing. you know, and then four of us are really involved with it. But everybody's really excited about it because the idea is to have Oregon uh, uh, and then have them and we'll also help them work with the state of Washington mm -hmm. and California act as a block to find out what are the best practices. What has anybody done or is thinking about doing that has either worked or they have been told will work, whether it's legislatively, whether it's legally, and that doesn't stop the street activism because we need to always apply the direct pressure. And everybody's welcome to, to join the group. Direct action is the key. If you're a designer and you, you volunteer to make flyers, you're in. You know, so long as you don't have to be begged to make the flyers. I mean, you, it's, everybody's gotta step up, and that's really what it's about. And the only thing that gets you kicked out 
is infighting, and that's going to be a permanent ticket out because um, I'm me and everybody else is so sick of all that stuff. It just doesn't work. We can't can fight amongst ourselves when there's so much work to do. We need to unify in solidarity. Right. right. And and the people in Oregon are great. We'll, we're we're talking to them soon. Working with some people who are fighting up in um, some of the coalition groups and the alliance well, groups up there. We're working on yeah. we're working on an action up uh -huh. in Oregon, right. hopefully for yep. this spring, uh -huh. uh, somewhere outside of Medford. Uh, right, Medford, you know, nor, nor, a little north of Ashland and everything. Because I was told if we do something up there, that some of the people there won't come down to um, the Mount Shasta area if we uh -huh. did something again. But they would go come down from Portland there because it's pretty far to, to come down. So we said then we'll do something up there. Meet them you know. halfway. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And eventually, I know I'll be going. I'll be going up to the gorge. I was there in Oregon a couple of years ago, and I fell asleep in my friend's drive, and I woke up, and I looked saw this massive expanse of a waterway, and it reminded me when I was a kid and went to, saw Niagara Falls. I had the same like aha, you know, uh, joyful experience, and I said it's pristine waters. It's beautiful. They need to keep the locks. You know, and the, the ship's coming through and keep it the way, exact way it is. They don't need Nestle's to do it, and they totally agree. And they're fighting really hard yeah. about that. And, it, and we want to support them every way we can. That's why we're, the alliance came, came to play that way because of the fact is if we work together, I think we can, you know, and so do the other people several of us have spoken to, I think we can have um, better and more lasting effects and significant ones. And to get the governor of Oregon even to consider um, blocking Nestle's from touching, uh, you know, draining water from the locks is amazing. Yeah. We don't hear our environmental governor Brown speaking yeah. about that. No. She actually made made it made a statement at about 5:30 today, oh, did she? Yeah. stating that she's going to do everything within her power to to to, to stop the the mm -hmm. draining of the gorge. Right. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It's about time we had yeah. a politician that can step up. You know, and right. you know, well, not worry step about up. what's in their pocket. They'll oh, yeah. step up if they see the will of the people is, right. there, yeah. is there. And that's, again, that's the important part is people mm -hmm. have to show up. They have to show up to events like this. They have to show up to, mm -hmm. to the rallies, to the marches. I mean, in the march at, at, at Shasta, we had uh, Chief Sisk heading mm -hmm. up the march. You know, the chief of the Winneman Wintu, who mm -hmm. made a brilliant, brilliant speech. And then... Uh, um, we had, you know, some local celebrities and things like that, but this, it's beginning to, to, to really, really steamroll. The synergy was and, incredible. Uh, yeah. and, 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 you know, we're looking at Southern California in, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the summer to, to do this. And, you know, our salaries for doing all of this are <laughs> we pay for the flyers. We're all, we're all <laughs> volunteers. We're all volunteers. Right. Yeah, exactly. there's, there's, um, yeah. there's no... There's no yeah. Absolutely, yeah. How do you no. how do you feel about um, campaign courage kind of stepping courage into campaign? The, courage we're, campaign? We're very happy. Very happy. Yeah, they, uh, yeah. they, they seem to be involved in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I just kind of did a little research on mm -hmm. them. They mm -hmm. have the three hundred three hundred and fifty thousand membership on Facebook. It's seventy five thousand likes, mm -hmm. uh, and they do take on a lot of causes, but they're messengers. Mm -hmm. uh, they use the internet really well to get out the, the word. We started mm -hmm. uh, pressuring them to get involved with us about seven months ago. And uh, they put out their first piece yesterday saying that the, the, the uh, Courage campaign mm -hmm. is backing uh, mm -hmm. Nestle's. So we're, I mean, we're, we're thrilled to have organizations like that coming on board. Uh, they, have, they have more funds. You know, they are also more legally inclined. Bob will go inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and play with the politicians. I, and I think they have a kind of an older contingent, too, that mm -hmm. happen to have a little more money and time mm -hmm. to be involved in this kind of stuff. And right. they come from a time where, you know, maybe they used to fight back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and it's kind of like they realize this is for their grandkids now it's mm -hmm. in, in our planet mm -hmm. sure. and it's getting crucial so it's wonderful sure. i just didn't you know i didn't know you know there they there have been people trying to put them down in the media mm -hmm. because of their activism and they mm -hmm. are making a difference but mm -hmm. they're saying no they're just trying to get you know get more email addresses you know mm -hmm. or right. something like right. that which is just a rub mm -hmm. we know. but yes they are trying to get more email addresses because right. they want to get out the messages right. to more and more people right. Right. Yeah. They, they take right. on really good fights mm 
Um, so you know, yeah, I, I, I certainly am proud I've of the I've seen work him on the fracking front, uh -huh. right? Yeah, and you know, sat in uh, sat in one of the, the rooms at the court uh, at the Capitol with them, and you know, they really do try to to uh, get their point across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. they use props to do mm -hmm. it, which mm -hmm. is fun. Mm -hmm. I love it. They've got a good fundraising source. They there. have very, okay. very well-spoken, intelligent people that, um, you know, will work with them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's wonderful. So we need, we need everybody. We need all the mm -hmm. groups together to fight these things that are just out of control these days. We, Everything is. We really need the, the here locally uh, organizations like Water Justice and Ecos to really step up and, mm -hmm. and, and, and not be mouthpieces but actually be on the lines with us uh, because they're the people that, that can be effective in, inside in the halls of Congress. And, and Bob's been doing a heck of a great job going to all those meetings and and speaking and <clears throat> doing all of that all the things i can't do because i'm too fidgety <laughs> yeah i have uh, have some patience and i could sit there um you know and, and the thing is i want you know and kudos to them because at the meeting i came from um before this uh i learned a lot of what they were doing and some things that they want to work uh they've been working uh trying to push some stuff on the legislative front so i told him we need to go in there and stuff and so and we'll make sure they know we're rabble rousers and everything like that because one of our goals always is to drive them into the other groups and have the other groups step up and 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 um ask for more mm -hmm. you know don't settle for crumbs ask for more because it's we're in a critical phase now and we had gone to an environmental conference last year and we kept on, I think, 10, 12 times at least, we said to each other, and that was like the first hour, we're running out of time. I mean, right. you had people, presenters talk about it, and then the host of it said, we're running out of time. And I looked <laughs> and said, it's like, did he see our script? Yeah. You know? yeah. And, you know, and the thing is, people don't realize that. When they turn their faucet on, they think that water... Uh, is an infinite it is an infinite. It always has been. It always <laughs> will be. They just don't understand about aquifers. They don't understand about... Um, you know, the watersheds, they don't understand about reservoirs, they don't understand because you're really not taught this kind of stuff in school. I mean, you know, it's like water comes from the source. Okay, right. great, what does that What's mean? What's the source? Yeah, it's like when they talk about, um, you know, uh, climate change. What, what really pisses me off a lot of times is that they don't go into causation. We all need to pull together and sacrifice and do this. Oh. Okay, and do what exactly? Right. And, and, I'm waiting, and, and they never talk about it. And we need to say that it's caused mm -hmm. by human activity. Right. right, yeah. Yeah, what is that? You, you know? know, so I'll stop running around and mm -hmm. we'll stop Everybody's doing a lot of Everybody's saying, no, and, this is just the yeah. way, this is nature's way. Right, right. No, I'm sorry. Right. Well, I think part of it is nature's <laughs> payback for the damage that we're causing. <laughs> yes. And I think that once we're, we're off the planet, nature will be very, very happy. The earth will be very happy to be rid of us. You know, those of us who are fighting always try to do this. We know that we may not affect, you know, um, initial change during our lifetime, but we hope to leave it for our children and grandchildren. And, and those that follow, and that's why we have to do it. It's, it's, we're stewards of the earth. It's our responsibility and our duty. It's our calling. And um, Gandhi had said, and I'll, because I, I know we're getting close to the time, he said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. And we, and that's what we're for. We're for winning, and winning to us is protecting the commons, preserving the planet. Um, and, you know, and I fight on ge with, um, re against geoengineering, and I just got pulled into that recently, gladly, and against GMO la labeling and involved in that. And, and then also, of course, you know, fighting for um, seed freedom because Monsanto's trying to end that. And then also, yeah. and of course, water. To me, it's a sustenance of life. What could be more honorable and noble to fight for? I know. We have mm -hmm. to just fight for the most basic things. Yep. And we have to get Survival. back to the most basic True. things because yep. we're just poisoning ourselves. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the big picture. We're looking right. at manufactured wars right now. Yeah. We're looking well, at, you know, and you can, I know that's a rabbit hole. You can, you can, I you mean, can tumble down. I mean, everything's upside down right now mm -hmm. as right far now, as I'm concerned. Right now it's very weird. Well, it keeps the people spinning and it's yeah. also, it's another diversion and you don't worry about what Nestle's doing because, hey, look, they bombed, they set off bombs in France. They're coming here, you know, and that kind of stuff. So you think, Think about that, so you're, you're not going to be thinking about exactly. this, which is exactly keep everybody in a heightened state of fear. I mean, we all need to be aware mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. we can fight locally, right. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but be mindful of everything else. Absolutely, and you connect know, the and dots. pick your battles. Right, but, that's exactly right. You yep. know, what can we do locally? Mm -hmm. Right, 
to to help our city and our mm -hmm. our, our our county, our mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. You know, let's focus right. on that initially. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing to do is people can start by showing up. I call this an activist party, and if the the first forty people show up, they get a T-shirt. Like this. <laughs> like yeah. this, right? You know? And so it's great. We often have music there. We have the theatrical, um, uh, political group that, come, that shows up and stuff. We do a lot of different things. And one, one thing is, it's about also educating and informing people. And I always tell reporters to go inside and please ask Nestle you know, questions. And, and, and actually, do me a favor, ask them this one question. I always find a question for them to ask. And they do, and they come out, and then they say, and I learned something from them that mm -hmm. then we can use the next time. And we did from the first event, and we also did from the second event. And I didn't know something because their spinmeister, the publicist there, you know, um, freely gave information. Well, you know, if they want us to pay more for water, you know, the city just has to ask us. You know, we'd be willing to consider it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the city just doesn't ask. I guess ask you right. think he might have lost us. his job. No, he still has it. <laughs> no, no. That was, that's what they told him. He to made say. their three salient points that are all right. really easily torn it's down. Like I'm but... going to point the finger right back that oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is not this this event is not going to be as theat theatrical right. as most because w normally with with Nestle it's really easy. And I first I want to mm -hmm. say we do these actions using nonviolent civil disobedience. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is, yeah. there is no violence tolerated <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. at, at our events. Uh, and so far, with Monsanto and with all of these and with all the banks, we've never had one arrest. Nope. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well on that. Um, the situation here is that we can't get so theatrical because we're not in a closed area. You know, we've got uh, three city blocks of Alhambra the back door of Nestle's and then the front door of Nestle's where we normally meet is going to be a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we won't have a lot of time to bring a lot of people together for speeches and things. Uh, we'll do our best, but... So anybody that's interested, we mm -hmm. want them to go to the, webs the website. Yeah. It's hashtag Crunch Nestle, Nestle Alliance. Alliance. Right. Mm -hmm. Check yeah, it yeah. out, you know, share it, um, join in. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. We more people we have, the more point we can make. You mm -hmm. know, as far as what is going on here, mm -hmm. and and let mm -hmm. the let them know that this is not acceptable anymore. Right. Plus, you get to meet a lot of great people and dedicated activists. Yeah. So yeah, make friends, make new friends. I agree. Mm -hmm. So any plans after this action? Yeah, we've got uh, <laughs> the, up at up in uh, Oregon and then down mm -hmm. in, in in Southern California. He's going to be right. working away on the Crunch Nestle Alliance or the mm -hmm. uh, Pacific the Northwest Alliance. Yeah, Pacific Northwest Alliance. Because we're going to be working on water issues, and then actually want to work on GMO issues and pull people together, and then also on um, geoengineering. And there'll be an event uh, at the state capitol on January fourth, Seed Freedom Rally, um, mm -hmm. to address that issue. And then we're also, both in, we're also right. involved in labor, right. so you right. know we yep. we stand with labor and uh, you know fifteen and fifteen and right. uh, Black right. Friday uh, and, yep. and 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 all of those things. Mm -hmm. And our so, unions, yeah. you know, we're trying to help right. everybody too, like get the step up and get the support they need to. Yeah. In and Oregon, I, interesting with the cas cascade uh, um, up in the. Um, uh, the gorge up there, what happens is that uh, I was told that Axme is involved up there. I don't know how we can get them here, but uh, it would be great if we could. It's, it's their union. Yeah. You know, we can't, those are 40 non union jobs here. And Write a letter. Aren't involved. <laughs> Write a letter, so, Bob. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to the people up there and find out. That's best practices. That's one of the best practices. That's yeah. how you find out. And we get yeah. a lot of pushback from the politicians yeah. that yeah. We, they'll be losing 40 jobs in Sacramento, but when yeah. they shut down McClellan and they lost 15,000 jobs, <laughs> and it was. It was all uh, sucked in. Mm -hmm. Forty non-union jobs is a right. small price to pay for making sure that hundreds of thousands have water. Uh, um, I agree. So right. we don't. We, we feel sorry for the, the the working stiffs that may be laid off. Yeah. But well, maybe we can help them get other jobs. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Better That's what jobs I was right. with union, yeah. you know, yeah, green union energy union jobs right. instead of dirty jobs. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That would be good. So, are we ready to go? Uh, last thing is, we're also on the plans is about initiating either a boycott or a rolling boycott on Nestle products. I just posted something today, everything that they make and, and every, uh, countries that they're working with and things about that. You know, that's going to come down the road. Just 
it's pretty heady because yeah. to be effective, we want to do it. But if everybody uh, who sat at their computer took a list of 10 products, put it up on their computer and said, hey, these are the ones I'm going to boycott and then told their friends and in their area, their neighborhood or whatever, or co-workers, uh, that would be good. And if everybody did it, we can spread it across the country. And by I the time we're done, we do shut them down. I do that at mm -hmm. my job. There you so go. I, yeah. You, and it, it works, can be right? Done. You yeah. have to you have to make big sacrifices. So mm -hmm. Personally, I can't eat Willy Wonka bars anymore. I love Willy Wonka bars. <laughs> Nestle Toll House cookies, yeah. right? Nestle <laughs> Quick. I remember we all grew up on that kind of stuff. Not anymore. No more Swiss yeah. Miss. No. And Nestle's Crunch. I used to love it. I love the little rice crackle things in it. Yeah, not anymore. No, nope. we yeah. have to make little sacrifices. Yep. We just have to. We will prevail. That's yep. right. We sure will. Yeah. And together, yep. we'll get it done. Yep. I hope so. Yep, and so definitely. thank you guys so yeah. much for being here. Oh, thank you here. so much for having so us. So nice Wonderful. of you to invite us, Joy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And thank you. Hopefully we'll yeah. be back. Yeah, Crunch yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> You're stretching and stretching.